All right, we are recording. So, hello, Matthias. Thank you to to join me. Did I pronounce it good? Yes, you did. Thank you. <laughs> How are you? Everything okay? Yeah, it's great. It's great. Holiday is around the corner and everything. Yeah. So it's good. Yeah. So I'm uh, pretty excited about uh, Direct Live based control and Direct Live because actually uh, I had Denon in the past, then I moved to Yamaha, and then when I heard that uh, Dirac uh, Live was uh, going to be headed to Denon and Marenz receiver, I jumped to Marenz again. And uh, the only reason was because uh, I was looking for a to try also different type of uh, software, calibration software, to see also how it's working, the result. And I really like the, the interface that was really easy to, to work with and uh, a beautiful interface. So you guys did a really great job. Maybe you want to speak a little bit about uh, how Dirac uh, gets started and uh, what, uh, what is your role in? Sure. Um, so, Actually, I'm one of the founders of Dirac and yeah. it was back in 1999, I did my master thesis on the topic of improving the sound of speakers in rooms through digital mm -hmm. signal processing. Okay. And the results were kind of overwhelming to us at the time. We didn't realize that there was so much potential. So we decided mm -hmm. to start a company from that. That was the company was founded back in 2001 and we were okay. six people then founding the company. So. Mm -hmm. We were students, PhD students, uh, okay. and some professors, in fact. And, and then we realized quite early on that, well, this idea is um, it's a little bit ahead of its time, so to speak, because you mm -hmm. know how it used to be audiophiles were very, uh, shall we say, uh, conservative and more yeah. inclined to use analog. And it was all about like keeping the signal pure throughout the, you know, mm -hmm. the electronic circuits and everything. Yeah which is fine, but um, the room is there and that's the weakest link in most systems. And mm -hmm. that's a huge part of the degradation of sound. So, but you know, time, time flew and we, we got into the car business. We had BMW as our first customer because they realized okay. in their little room, the car cabin, they couldn't get okay. good sound without having technology like so, this. So was at the beginning uh, only for automotive and uh, you guys enter in the home theater later or uh, how, yeah, how was we, it at the time actually? Our idea when we started the company was to go quite broadly, both into automotive and into the home. But we okay. realized quite early on that the home audio market at that point in time wasn't quite ready. You had a okay. few attempts at room correction and so on, but it was a little too early. Mm -hmm. And the car industry was actually ahead okay. of its time uh, in this okay time so it took a few years until we entered the home audio market and mm -hmm. and cinema theaters with uh, datasat was the first um, commercial cinema processor that used direct live room correction okay. and that was also the same technology that we used for bmw in fact and okay. that's that's typically been like it's very similar so we are adapting technologies mm -hmm. from one industry to the other uh, so today we're focused on both automotive and home audio. These two are the main areas for us, but we mm -hmm. are doing other things. We're doing headphone optimization. We're doing spatial audio for headphones. We've done a lot of stuff in for small speakers, optimizing you know the micro transducers that you have in mobile phones, okay. even and so on. So there's there's a lot of stuff okay. we're we're doing. Consumer in headphones or uh... how how many we are. Uh, cons consumer headphones or is more in the professional? Uh... No, that's consumer headphones actually. Consumer headphones. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's about you work with I don't know company famous company in uh, yes. consumer headphones or? Yeah. So okay. one uh, who's familiar for home audio enthusiasts is Klipsch. They're also doing uh, some TWS earphones that we have optimized so that you just get the improved clarity. Okay. clean sound and so on and then we've okay. done also spatial audio one of the interesting companies that we worked with is neura from australia they were also mm -hmm. bought by denon and marantz recently so it's now okay. the denon pearl pro is another tws where we have done the spatial audio mm -hmm. uh, so those are some of the the, the kind of well-known brands and there are some others like studio clear okay. etc as well hey, yeah i'm asking you this because uh 
now uh, in the Techuara actually really famous in the consumer audio, audio and uh, in home theater is is nice to to know and people should know that uh, actually is is much more than uh, than only home theater and uh, we saw recently that uh, Denon and Marantz implemented uh, direct live based control that is actually the main topics of uh, of today in the Denon and Marantz receiver and i was expecting this actually for uh, next year for begin of uh, of next years but i think we the idea, uh, it's nice to see that uh, it's ready and I already tested. I don't know if you saw my video about it. I did, I did a yes, tutorial I did. and set up. So maybe uh, um, you can uh, tell us what is live-based control from po your point of view and uh, why people want it. First of all, it's, you know, we, with direct live, the regular room correction, we're treating yeah. each channel independently. We're improving the frequency response and impulse response now the impulse response is the time domain behavior the phase behavior mm -hmm. so the the snappiness and and what really helps in bringing the staging and imaging together uh but one of the things we didn't address with direct live was how you integrate your subwoofers with the system mm -hmm. and this is a constant struggle for everybody that's tried especially if you're more than one subwoofer it's yeah. really tricky uh so that's why we develop bass control, because you know bass is so much, such a large part of the actual experience in a room. Uh, you know, according to research that uh, I guess uh, Sean Olive did, it's like 30% of the preference rating is in the bass. Mm -hmm. So it's very important, and yet it's very hard to get it right. You need to manually tweak and set the crossovers and so on. Yeah. So with bass control, we're making that automatic. You still select the crossover frequency between the main speakers and the subwoofers, as you know. But then we do the rest for you, so to speak, or the algorithms do the rest. And first of all, it's just nice to be able to see the sum result that you get, especially if you have more than one subwoofer, like I said. You know, mm -hmm. it's a great idea to have many subwoofers, but the risk is that you're actually ending up getting less bass yeah. from more subwoofers because subwoofers interact with rooms and then they sum up, and depending on which phase they are in and the, the phase behavior of the room, mm -hmm. distance and so on, you can get quite a lot of destructive interference. And that means you're actually getting less energy. So what we're doing with base control is, first of all, you're actually allowed to just see what the sum result becomes of the entire system. And, and that's where, you know, in the program, we call that the base management system. They would just yeah. plot it for you. You have a target response and you see what you're actually getting when you sum up the subwoofers. But mm -hmm. then we have the base control stage. And that's where we say, okay, we didn't quite get maximum SPL and we didn't quite get uh, the same base in all the seats in the room. Yeah. Then base control comes in through manipulating the phase response of the subwoofers and how they they control how they sum together so that you get the most you know in phase summation at your listening point and not just in your listening point but also that you minimize the variations from one seat to the other because that's a typical problem you know depending on where you mm -hmm. seat that in the room you can get very different bass responses yeah and in a good room you get much less of these variations and that's what we do with bass control so we kind of make can... Sorry for if I interrupt you, you, but you can still select a narrow calibrations or a bigger one. True. So we're just yeah, we're still just reusing the measurements you do for your regular direct live room correction, mm -hmm. and it's exactly the same measurements. And you decide how large you want your sweet spot to be, because yeah. of course the larger sweet spot you do, the you you're making more of a compromise. Mm. But for you know, depending on your setup you do want to have like your whole family listening and so on and that's like the regular stuff you you measure according to yeah your preferred sweet spot okay and then in the base control setup we make sure that your subwoofers work as well as possible together in your room for all these seats for all the measurement positions mm -hmm. that you have done and the interesting thing is we're not doing any uh you know any uh 
peaks or dips. We're just using all pass filters. We're just adjusting phase at different frequencies. Okay. To make them sum up perfectly. And I, I received actually a very interesting uh, questions about phase, uh, about um, someone that was asking me that if base control could help to integrate different type of uh, subwoofer models, for example. So, for example, I don't know, I have a smaller subwoofer and I wanted to integrate it with a bigger one that for sure it has uh, different specs. To, could be base control a, a solution for that? It is. In fact, uh, it's funny you mentioned it because I was just doing just two weeks ago a setup like that with three subwoofers. One was a big per listen subwoofer, mm -hmm. that was a JBL subwoofer, and another, the third one was a smaller one. Very yeah. different characteristics, all of them. And without, first, you know, I would do the regular room correction. And, you know, you look at each frequency response of the subwoofers, they look nice together. Mm -hmm. But when they sum up in the room, it wasn't good. It wasn't good at all. Yeah. You had you lost a lot of bass. But then I just applied bass control on that. And voila, you actually got exactly what you wanted. You got the bass extension from the per but yeah. you got the you know the mid bass support from the smaller subwoofer. Mm -hmm. So you got all of the stuff you wanted. So yeah, definitely. And uh, we saw with uh, Daniel and Marens that now, as soon you enable, of course, bass control, you can't anymore set your speaker on uh, large or, or small. And I heard about that probably uh, Dirac will, will do an upgrade about it or it must be uh, like that. So your point of view about it. Yeah, so right now, yeah. when we're doing bass control, we, the Dirac block in the Danonor Marantz receiver is sort of yeah. taking over all of these bass management settings. Management. Yeah. So, it is in a way you could say maybe a limitation because you cannot select it in the receiver, but you still mm -hmm. of course can go into the Dirac Live app and change yeah. the crossover settings and so on. You do have certain limitations with it for sure. So it, it really deals with a base managed system where you have mm -hmm. uh, your, your full ranges, not maybe able to play down to 20 Hertz or below where you're using the regular crossover to you know, take out the, the base from the mains mm -hmm. and put it into your subs. That's sort of the, the setup that it's aiming to solve. So it doesn't solve all the problems. Uh, in uh, you, know, you can't do any kind of mm -hmm. uh, up mixing or, or base management where you, for example, take the, uh, uh, use your, your mains for the LFE, for example. It doesn't do yeah. that, unfortunately. That, I even know it makes yeah. sense that uh, as soon you have subwoofer, you know. I, I never use it. I always had it on, on small, you know. But people didn't like the, the that uh, to call the, uh, the speaker small. So right. I think now then they change it and they call it full bandwidth or uh, limited. Exactly. And yeah. that's actually a good point. I think that's yeah. an old kind of terminology, but it doesn't really make sense to call them big or small. It doesn't really have to do with that. Yeah. And the other point is that uh, also now uh, you can select any more uh, directional subwoofer to so play uh, between uh, setup uh, the subwoofer in directionals or mono, for example, because it's everything managed by base control, right? How how the subwoofer are are um, are interacting with the, with the main speaker uh, regarding the directional uh, conf setup configurations? Yeah. Right. So it's. It's not doing directional base, that's correct. So it's yeah. it's more of a traditional base management system okay. in that okay. sense, where you know uh, you take the base out of a certain speaker and put it yeah. into the uh, or to from a speaker group, I should say, like yeah. left and right, and into yeah. the subs instead. Because actually, it's, yeah, it makes sense because low frequency should be invisible. I think no. Well, that's that's the whole theory, right? That yeah. you know, if you if we're using subwoofers and crossing over them below 100 hertz, you're not able really to hear the directionality yeah. of the sound. Of course, you can debate that to some extent. You probably hear a little bit, yeah. uh, but also then you have, in reality, you know how how music and movies are mixed. Uh, you're not always using anyway directional information there because of the same reasons because it the, the the movie material and so it needs to work on any kind of sound system yeah and also by enable uh, base management and base control we saw that now is everything uh, 
uh, structured in, in groups, like you have groups for front speakers, group for surround, is to is done like that to help to integrate everything together? The, yeah, and, and that's a good point, good question. It's because typically in a system you would have, say, your front speakers are pretty big, and like mm -hmm. you, you would typically, you know, select a, a, a higher uh, crossover frequency for your mm -hmm. ceiling speakers or your surrounds than, than your two front speakers. Yeah. So the idea is that this is the typical setup, that you have different speakers, but typically in pairs, or well, not mm -hmm. except for the center speaker. And where the pair has similar characteristics, and so you do base management, base control on that speaker group. So you combine the subwoofers with the main speakers yeah. and subwoofers with the surrounds, etc. So that's why we're doing the grouping. We're also making sure in base control, this is maybe uh, one of the smaller features, but nevertheless important, that mm -hmm. in those pairs between the left and the right, for example, in the crossover region, that the mono material of the base then, or, or the, the frequency areas around the crossover, mm. is summing up in phase there as well. So okay. there, that's another reason why we're grouping. We're making sure these two are always kind of, you know, left and right. They they are pairs, and it's often mixed like that. So when you have something which is common in those those two channels, you want to make yeah. sure that that plays perfectly in phase at your listening position. Okay. And I would like to enter now in, uh, not yet in the in the software. If you have time, we will enter quickly in the software. To I would like to show you a couple of things that are still uh, not easy to understand for me. But yeah. before to do these, I would like to really understand the difference between um, base control and base management. Because yes. let me tell you something. When I test for the first time. So I did three exports. If you saw my video, I did a one export that was the standard one with Dirac Live. Then I did one with only with Dirac management. That, if I'm not wrong, now the Denon and uh, Marantz are giving it uh, for free, right? That's correct. The okay. Uh, okay. any kind of unit that has the base control feature enabled, where you can still use base management even if you don't purchase a a separate license for okay. base control. Yeah. Okay, and um, I compared uh, my standard Dirac uh, Live, so was the first calibrations, uh, where I set the crossover point from uh, still from the AV receiver. You can set it manually, and I compare it with uh, the Dirac management uh, uh, export, where you can select it with uh, with the software. And the results was the Dirac management sounds much better. So what actually what is the difference? <laughs> between between the two things, yeah. So when you know when you use direct base management, yeah, and this is a bit confusing in the software. I completely agree, actually. <laughs> a, a little bit, yeah, a little bit, yeah. Actually, I was not sure that I'm doing correctly. No, at the moment when I did no, I understand. The export, yeah. With the base management, when you're in that part of the software, yeah, then we're not doing this all pass filter optimizations that I talked about to even out the base variations. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing then is it's more like the traditional crossover yeah. and you can select you know whether you want it at 70 80 or 90 hertz and it's a fourth order link with riley crossover so it's complementary so it's like good mm -hmm. crossover settings and depending on there where you put your crossover frequency uh, you see how the response changes in yeah. uh, the plots so you see what you're getting there and that's what you get with base management Okay. So that's the Dirac's basement. That's our crossovers rather than the sort of standard out of the box ah, than on the okay. So I'm more a more sophisticated uh, crossover. Well, it's ours at least. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Danos and Marans are really good okay. as well. Uh, and and then we have base control. Then we have base you, control. And you are doing, what what yeah. you want to do when you go over to the base control setting and compare, you need to make sure also in the software that your target curve is. The one that you want to use because base management will produce a separate set of filters for you go to base oh. control okay and you set the crossover point and you look at the target response yes and then you're also seeing again there the end result what you actually get okay it's some response uh, and that's quite an important one to look at at each of the frequencies because the idea there with these old pass filters we're gonna get less 
dips, you're going to get the more even bass response. Mm -hmm. But we only have so many old pass filters because you don't want to do too much phase alterations in the bass because that okay. might also influence time domain behavior. So the algorithm is looking at different uh, ways to optimize and that's what we call a genetic okay. optimization, okay. which comes up with a solution. Then you can look at these results and see how flat did it get. And you might not like the result because there might be some dip remaining. Yeah. And then what you want to do in that case is to just test again by maybe moving the crossover point a little bit up and down, which mm -hmm. typically doesn't make a big difference to the sound. Yeah. But it may change a certain you know, frequency, uh, what, what, what the summation becomes. Okay. And you look at that and then you export it. So in practice, in normal use case, uh, what you will get is a more even base and more base with base control than with base management, especially it will be more even. But the typical yep. thing when you have multiple subwoofer is that they cancel out quite a lot of each other's energy actually in the room. Okay. Uh, so typically with base control, you get more energy. So you might want to adjust the target response a little bit in the base depending mm -hmm. on your preference there yeah yeah i think we can jump quickly to just show you my my measures and because yeah. i have uh, some questions there one seconds let me share share screen Okay. Do you saw the direct life? Yep, I see it. Yes. Okay, perfect. So let's start with uh, direct live. This we saw it in my first video. And here, interesting is uh, we can see the house curve that is uh, suggested to us from from direct live. And and generally, I let it like that because I like it so much. This plus five uh, boost on the bass. Uh, also because I don't listen at high volume, so. I, I find it work really, really nice for my listening environment. And yeah. uh, moving on uh, base management, actually, we can see that uh, we don't have any more this plus five, exactly. but we have this plus two. That was actually something that uh, I had it. Uh, I have it uh, in um, with the subwoofer uh, house curve in direct live. Mm -hmm. So this it will be the new house curve. When I move exactly. to base management or base control, it will be plus two. Yep, exactly. And that depends okay. on your specific measurements in your room, actually, what it was suggested yeah. there. But there is a slight difference when you look now at the house curve here or the, the frequency response, because what you're seeing here and what the target response is here in the base management and base control view, that is not just the target for you know the individual front left and front right speaker but yes. it's the front speakers plus your subwoofers plus subwoofer yes plus all the subwoofers exactly okay. so okay. so in that sense it is the sum response you're seeing okay whereas when you just have the direct live setting you're looking at only that front speaker yeah so it is a slightly different interpretation and what you see here then the mm. pink curve yeah uh, which is a little bit thicker that is the sum response that you have on average in your listening position now and you see you have like a bit of a peak at 20 hertz and then yeah. it goes down again and comes back up around yeah. what is it, 40 50 hertz there and that's yeah. in this case now you we have just applied the crossovers but no additional uh, some response optimization which is these yeah. all pass filters that i talked about and that's yeah. what you do when you go to the base control thing and then okay. it tries to remove these dips that you had here we go let's see exactly okay now we are on base control still having the house curve that we had in base management but we don't see any more these uh these right, dips then you need to do, about it. now you should press calculate okay so that you get new filters I think, I think it will take a little bit of time yeah it'll take a little bit of time because it needs to go through all of these channels and then you'll see uh, what the sum response looks once we have tried to optimize how these different bass speakers sum together in the room. 
with the okay. OBS filters. Let's see if it will do it. There's a lot of computations going on here, trying different all pad filter combinations mm -hmm. to see how they kind of sum up the different speakers in, in your listening positions and coming up with the one that has the least variations. Okay. So we can see that, uh, we can say that our, uh, yeah. Mm. What you see in direct, as soon as you, you had base control, I mean, you have to do everything there, uh, house curve and everything must be done in uh, in base control, right? Exactly, yes. And that's that's important because I think the people was a little bit confused uh, about it. That's something we realized as well. Right? But this needs to be clarified a bit in a future up update to the software. Yeah, I, I think the SO, uh, yeah. Because as soon the people saw that there are three uh, three pages about direct life management, base control, and some of them had base management without purchasing base control. So yeah. everyone was just a little bit confused. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> that's why I released the video. Just uh, they found it in interesting and, and helpful. And that's, uh, that's it let's see if, uh, yes, I think it's complete. Let's. Let's head it. Here we go. Yeah. So then you can see there that there is a, like a super flat response now, uh, yeah. which means that you have a much more even bass, you know, sound pressure level at the different frequencies there in the bass region. But it's so, interesting because I, I, I mean, I even moved the crossover point from seven. I let it like that, and he was able to calculate a good, uh, a good uh, crossover uh, frequency point without even uh, even mo move it to ninety as I did in, on base management. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then what you should do to be like really, uh, you know, get the best result, you need to look at all of these. Well. Uh, I mean, now it's calculated all the filters and so on, but like you can look at each of the speaker groups and see okay. what you get uh, before and after. So I can see before and after? Yep, exactly. So okay. well, you see uh, down to the right, there you have some toggle buttons for yes. to show. And yes. there you can see, uh, oh, it's hard for me to see, it's a little low resolution here, but okay, you can see we have corrected response. We have group colors, uh, spread, no target curve curtains, detected range. I think no. Ah, measures versus corrected. I think exactly this one. Yeah. Okay. This so there you see that's one. a nice response, and that was the before response that you had there. Okay. So now you see like this is on yes. average the response you're getting the purple line at least on my computer. I, okay. Purple. This okay. Okay. All right. Okay. And these are the Very two big, on yeah. the left. All right. Yeah. Then if I move, for example, let's take a look of the subwoofer also. Subwoofer one and subwoofer two. Here also same things. Okay. In green we have this is subwoofer uh, that, yeah. one plus two. The two together, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, makes sense. Okay. All right. Yeah, this was 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 not clear to me. Uh, exactly. Yeah. The, the difference between management and and control, but now I I figure out what. Uh... Yeah. So essentially, like the base management is truly just the traditional base management yeah. done by us, but yeah. and the, the real value add is the base control part where you're able to get those nulls that we saw taken away, so that you get. Yeah more even base, uh, both in the main position, but also if you're measuring in more positions uh, all, for all the seats. All right, I have some questions from followers. I think a couple of questions that are interesting, maybe uh, you can answer about. And the first one was um, was asking about uh, Jack Live, if he's able to, Correct the um, properly uh, the inputs response on coaxial driver. 
Yes. I don't know why he asked me this, but uh, he wanted to know about coaxial driver and uh, if Dirac Live is able to work on input response also with them. Oh, definitely. In fact, I'd say coaxial is a great choice for DSP in general, digital signal processing, because then you have it, you know, you have the tweeter, so to speak, and the, the mid range at the same position. Yeah. They're not spread out. And that means that the when we correct for the impulse response, uh, deficiencies in the room, it's going to be very, you know, the results will not vary much with position. Whereas if, mm -hmm. you know, you have a, if you instead spread out the speakers, like in a regular two-way system, yeah. there's more of a sensitivity to the specific position uh, okay. where you get the, the so in, in a sense for, to, to build a great system, sound system for where you really employ digital room correction and impulse response correction to its biggest potential they should design the speakers that have really good um, dispersion even dispersion throughout the room mm -hmm. because yeah. then uh, you know we when we're doing speaker by speaker optimization we cannot change the spreading of the sound obviously we can only make it better on average so the less variations you have in different from different angles from the speaker mm -hmm. the you know the the better it will be for more people okay then i had another question regarding uh, bass control uh, he was speaking about that he he has only one subwoofer and he's not sure that bass control could help to improve the situations because he's, he was already satisfied and what if he would like to purchase it but maybe we'll find later that uh, the results are pretty pretty the same can still uh, um, what do you think about this this point? I mean, to have yeah, one subwoofer or multiple subwoofer? I mean, bass control has its biggest advantage for multiple subwoofers. That's clear. Okay. Uh, but in, in, and then it's like he says there. I think it's a very reasonable question. If you have a good setup with one subwoofer, uh, then bass control might not add that much because okay. it depends on where your subwoofer is placed compared with the main speakers and how it interacts with the room, how mm -hmm. much of extra gain you get from bass control. But okay. one way to check that out, even without buying bass control, is to just have, if you have it on Amaranth, then as, I, as we just talked about, bass management is included. And what that yeah. means is that then you can see the sum response without bass control, yeah. but with our bass management. And if you see there in the response that, oh, Wow, at the crossover point, I'm actually getting some kind of, you know, suck out, which is the typical thing when they're not placed close to each other, the subwoofer and the main. Then you have a problem which base can, control can correct for. But okay. if it looks really even in the crossover region, then base control will not add that much for the single subwoofer case because then we've done what we can already because with one subwoofer only, if it's all right. In the interaction with the main speakers, we've yeah. already optimized that single subwoofer as much as we possibly can with the regular direct live room correction. That's, that's a really interesting point. I, I didn't uh, talk about it uh, in my video because I didn't know it at the time about base management. And uh, these uh, actually, guys, is uh, when I when as I told you when I compared direct live with. Dirac, uh, only with Dirac based management, I, I, I had a great improvement. So, guys, I think this is the first test that uh, everyone should do. Yeah, I, I really think. Yeah, because it's, it's, since it's included anyway, sorry for yeah. interrupting, but I, that's one of the values I, I think we haven't communicated. Exactly. exactly. Enough, which is a great thing just to see what actually happens in your room and actually get that sum response up there. And, and typically, like you say, you get an improvement over sort of an off the shelf. Uh, crossover filter and especially you can tweak the crossover point and see what happens in the frequency response and that's without having to purchase another license yeah it is something for let's say for that was included and in, now included uh, in the in your standard license yeah and the other questions was about in, uh, about um, a guy follower that was speaking about the lack of support for uh, ceiling uh, bounce Atmos speaker. So it's do it don't speak about uh, in-cell speaker, but the bounce speaker. Right, yes. 
So reflections, Peter, are using the reflections of, of, of the wall. I didn't understood this question, so that's why I want, I need your help. Now I need to think here. If, yeah, so if there is difference in the calibrations between mm -hmm. uh, in cell speaker that are firing directly to you and uh, speaker that you, you know, these yeah. speakers that are reflecting, uh, uh, working with reflections. So you place it on the front speaker and they are wo uh, working by, by bounce on. Uh, yeah. And, and, on... If, and as far as I remember, I'll actually check this offline after okay. the call because I just need to double check that we actually released it. But as far as I remember it, so yes, it works differently with these, you know, virtual height speakers, so to speak, that mm -hmm. work for the bounce. Uh, there is a different target curve being applied. You need to okay. say that this is such a virtual uh, Atmos ceiling speaker well, to the software, which is a, a checkbox in the setup phase. And this but then it does apply a different uh, target to that. But just to make sure, mm. because this is so rare that I myself use that, so I, I just need to double check after the call here. And I, I'm not a fan of it, it, but I know that uh, some people have it because, of course, yeah. they can't do work. You can't work always get the exactly the ceiling speaker. Yeah. Also because I have acoustic treatment on ceiling, so it will be not working for me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I I tested in, in the beginning and uh, was okay, but not not really as uh, in setting speaker. Yeah. So uh, there is something that you would like to add to as um, suggestions uh, to do as soon you enable base control. Something that that people should focus on uh, on the graph to look on the graph suggestions yep. to get a better result from base control yep oops <laughs> something happened in my computer no problem, no problem. yeah i think there's uh, but first of all i think you know when you have what i think a lot of people don't understand is even how how difficult it is to get multiple subwoofers to work well Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a huge fan of having multiple subwoofers because in theory you get so much gain from that yeah but you actually almost always in practice end up with less space or like really bad uh interference between them mm -hmm. so therefore i think it's very important to just realize that something like base control helps a lot and when you're using base control then uh, i think it's important because we're working with a few old pass filters yeah who make the sum as good as possible you should in you should make sure to look at the you know your crossover point and your target response and then look at this after the correction curve for each of your speaker groups and see mm -hmm. that okay it looks just like it did for you now really flat and nice because yeah. now we're looking at the sum response make sure that's great if you find that you have somewhere a dip still remaining which might be the case because we only have so many all pass filters. Yeah. Uh, then try to run it again. Maybe just change the uh, crossover point a little bit. Because this, yeah. this type of algorithm we're using, it can actually end up with different results every time it runs. Because it's a mm -hmm. what we call a genetic algorithm. It's a little bit stochastic in its nature. Yeah. But you can inspect the results and look at that response. And it should be as smooth as possible, right? Then you're good to go. Another thing to look at afterwards to see, you know, what you, you got for the money is to look at that spread you have in the software. You can look at the spread between the different measurement points. It's a little mm -hmm. differ, difficult to look at that curve sometimes. Okay. Uh, but what you do see after base control is that this spread, the different curves that you see on top of each other, frequency response curves, they are coming closer together. And Actually, let, let, let me, sorry for, if I interrupt, let me, op, uh, I will open the spread because I, I never uh, use it. Uh, yeah, it's one time. something you'd normally use. I'd okay, say, so should, should I go on front yeah, speaker, exactly, for this example? This one is a good one. Actually, this, or, or yeah, either one. Subwoofer, this one. Yeah, you could look at that one. Okay, I enable spread from here. So if you guys are interested, you, you can enable here measures and correct it. So should I here enable you can more? see how big the variations are. And then you can compare that without and with so after before and after to the left and to the right okay there. corrected okay so, so what exactly it is, you can repeat it again because so what what you see here is the spread yes. so between different measurement points how the frequency response varies so what you ah, okay. ideally okay. like is that they go completely together right but that's yeah. not going to happen in reality yeah. because there's always spread okay 
but you should see that it comes down and that means more yeah. more positions sound as intended there you see it's like without it's before a correction, it and much, that's after much, you see how it's okay. the variations yeah. are much lower yes and that's kind of proving the point that you're getting more even based response throughout the listening area okay so those are things to just look at you know before and after correction uh and then you can of course uh, you know play around with the settings like the crossover settings and you will see how the result changes hmm. uh because it's not always obvious what frequency or it's rarely obvious what frequency to use for the crossovers if yeah. you put them higher up you typically can play louder spl uh, yeah. for example but it's also depending a lot of your speaker room combination which is the best one and you can then yeah. just play around with that and see what you're getting after the correction by looking at the frequency responses okay also because i think uh, base informations are really reliable i mean what you can see measured from microphone is, is really what you hear uh, right yeah i think it is actually that's you know mm. measurement here that's the key you, it, it's yeah. hard to predict base responses in rooms like mm. you know everybody's always asking where do i place my subwoofer Mm. And and reality is it's very hard to give advice on that because uh, these guidance you can get theoretically rarely works in practice because we don't have completely yeah. stiff walls which all these you know nice theories uh, yeah. assume. So in reality you need to measure your response and the way we measure it you get high resolution measurement you can really see what's going on in the base. So we find mm. that it is highly reliable, yeah. but you need to measure. To, to know what's going to happen. Once I was playing also without without microphone, I just uh, set up my subwoofer and just with an app, I was changing the frequency, just sitting in my listening positions and try to hear what uh, how, how the bass is working uh, only with, uh, you know, a frequency generator and this stuff. That was also nice and, and fun to do it. Yeah, that's something, that's a great idea. I think I recommend that to anybody because then you realize if you put that, you know, like you do, you have a signal generator, put it yeah. up to whatever, 60 hertz or something, walk around in the room and listen, and you're going to hear how dramatically different it yeah. sounds. In different I positions. use Rumeku, Rumeku Weeds also. Yeah. It's a free That's software. Very yeah. easy nice to, to do it. All right. So I was working with uh, different, uh, let's call it partner, like uh, Denon, Marantz, uh, Pioneer, and uh, all this stuff. Are you guys uh, working till the end, till the, the release of uh, upgrades? Or you say, it, OK, we have Dirac Live is done already. Now you do the implementations. <laughs> uh, we're, we're always looking to do new stuff. There's always new okay. ideas cooking, right? So yeah, yeah we, we see so many different opportunities. As you might know, we released what we call active room treatment, which is currently only yeah. available for storm audio. But of course, we want to push that out to more customers. And and who knows what's next, right? There's so many different ideas that we we have how to improve the sound in, in rooms. Mm -hmm. I, I hear that uh, Dan and Marens, we are uh, testing it at, at the moment. So maybe we will see something for next year. Let's hope so. I hope. <laughs> I, I tested actually in uh, to the high end Munich uh, this year. Uh, was a Perlissen uh, home theater, really beautiful with uh, storm audio, and uh, but unfortunately we didn't compare the with and without uh, uh -huh. active. Uh -huh. So was the result was amazing, but unfortunately we didn't compare it. So yep. I hope to do it soon because I hear the really good stuff. What exactly is doing? Well, it's it's. You know, it's somehow building on base control because mm -hmm. in base control, we're trying to use several subwoofers together with the main speakers to create a better sound. Mm -hmm. But ART is taking that idea even further. They were yeah. tr truly trying to create sort of the best possible impulse responses throughout your listening area by using the base of all the speakers in your systems. Yeah. So, for example, if I'm listening to a 5.1 or nah, 5.3 system, I'm not just going to use the, say, the front left with the three subwoofers. I'm actually mm -hmm. going to use it together with the center speaker and all the other four speakers okay. in the bass region to create a more impactful bass. I'm okay. able then to cancel out reflections from sidewalls, which otherwise would be impossible to, to do. So it's really like I'm changing the whole room acoustics. Because I might have in my home theater, like here, I have speakers around here, 
means I can control the sound field from different points, you know, from different directions. And of course, then you can really control the wave field and get uh, an extremely dry bass response, very tight bass response. So that's what it's doing. It's taking room correction to another level. And it's again based on just using the speakers that you anyway have and not requiring them to be in a specific configuration or anything. It will use what you have to get more out of your existing hardware. And it's, I think it's actually, it's one of the coolest things we have done uh, so far, uh, which really makes a huge impact uh, okay. on the sound experience. So uh, look forward to having it out in more systems and getting more people to hear it and play around with it and see what you can do with it. Because you can also build completely new kinds of speaker systems around that. It's more like using uh, not just subwoofers, but woofers. Speakers are just built to support the main speakers to create better sound in your room. Is a similar technology also used in automotive for creating sort of noise cancelling stuff or things like that? Exactly. It's actually, mm. we're using this in automotive just for the, to create better sound in, in the yeah. car, but it's very related to active noise control because there, mm -hmm. you know, active noise control, it's like you have some noise from the side and then you need to have a speaker from sort of the same angle, same, same direction, playing in opposite phase. Here, that in active room treatment, it's not noise, but it's reflections. Yeah. And then we're actively trying to cancel out those reflections from the right angles and so on. So it's very, very related to active noise control, actually. Okay. Yeah. This will be really, really interesting. And um, it will be is still an exclusive for uh, Storm Audio for uh, for this year uh, and next yes. year also, or only this no, year? No, it's uh, we're going on, to see other. Part. There, okay. there will be other uh, units coming out uh, sometime here Great. quite early, Great. I think, next year. Okay. Oh, that's super, super information. And last questions, uh, which home, home theater do you have at home? Uh, at home? <laughs> I don't have a home theater, actually. My ah, best okay. sound system is my, my car audio system. Right now, okay. where I live, I don't have... Uh, I have a, I have a um, combined living room and where I listen to music, but right now we're kind of in between. I used to have some Lin speakers that I liked a lot back in mm -hmm. the day, but we had to get rid of them when the kids came and uh, and they're still small. Now they're growing up, so now I'm planning to build a new setup okay. for, for our living room. Um, okay. And that's going to definitely build on active room treatment because I want to use rather small but good main speakers and tie hideaways and woofers and bass speakers to make okay. sure I still get the full-blown experience and so that my, my dear wife stays happy also because she doesn't allow me to Build two crazy <laughs> stuff at home. Super, Matthias. Thank you very much for uh, for your times. I hope uh, that I answered to many questions of you guys. And uh, please go around and test base management because it's uh, already there. Uh, also, without uh, purchase the base uh, control license, so you have something to do. Thank you very much. And thank you. See you soon. Thank you very much for your time. Ciao, ciao. Bye bye.